guys, it's Gene. Welcome back to my channel. I really uh, want to thank all my subscribers and everybody for watching this video. Um, I know it's been a little while since I've uh, produced one, but um, you know, people got things to do. <laughs> but uh, I've been out there messing around, and um, here's a little field test footage coming up from the uh, White Spectre V3i. I started off with the factory coil, and then I moved to the uh, Eclipse Shooter Double D coil. And uh, I'm really impressed with that. It still gets good depth. I was testing it in my uh, test bed. Um, on the bigger coins, I can hit, you know, the bigger 8-inch coins, the dime. A little bit of trouble with that one, kind of intermittent. But with lower sensitivity settings, uh, I wasn't having any problems with the 6-inch coins. And, uh, you know, in extreme high trash, that's what I recommend. You know, low in your sensitivity, you know, up in your recovery speed. Uh, really working the machine slow and um, it's amazing what will come out of the ground especially uh, you know heavily hunted sites seems like most people you know may not have the patience to or it may seem impossible to uh, pull coins out of some of these spots but uh, with the V3i a little patience working it slow you know not trying to push the machine too hard uh, you'll find all kinds of stuff in places that uh, you know people don't even go to anymore they think they're hunted out um, when I find a place like that the first place I look for is a you know extremely trashy site because I know that's the challenging place and uh, a lot of stuff's going to get missed you know a lot of machines you know have a really slow recovery speed um, they may be passing right over them when they looked you know with a bigger coil may not have even seen these targets and uh, uh, with the V3i, you know, you can set it up to work in any environment, you know, um, you know, as usual, this is just, you know, my, my opinion, unpaid, unbiased, but uh, so far I'm really loving this machine and uh, it's getting the job done. Let me show you this footage and uh, you're going to see my settings first, the footage, and uh, hope to see you guys on my channel again soon. Thanks for watching. Alright guys, I'm going to show you my settings that I've been using uh, in this high trash environment. The program I'm using is a little modified version of the High Pro program. Uh, one of the main changes I've done is just uh, change the tone ID and this can really help you out in the iron is to change you know negative 30 and below to the five tone where it just makes a clicking noise when you go over iron like a mild click instead of a loud grunt you know that that can distract you from the good targets you'll just hear this mild click 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 every time you go over small iron and you can see here on my scale uh, you know 30 ish and above I'm accepting so I'm trying to keep the machine from uh, nulling you know as much as possible if you reset from target to target very quickly from a null to a target can take just slightly longer ground tracking I'm locking the track you're gonna find a clean I had to walk 10 <laughs> feet away to find a place to ground balance but you want to ground balance somewhere clean lock that because you don't want the thing trying to track and track and track when you're you know over extreme extreme trash running normal soil and I've got an offset plus one sensitivity running the RX gain at 10 all metal 60 disc 80 if I'm getting some chatter and stuff I'll run this down to 75 with no worries and if there's EMI or other stuff present you can run 9, 8 and you're still gonna get your 6 inch coins easy I'd start off around 9, see how that goes. Transmit frequency, 3 frequency, best data. And then, you know, check for electromagnetic interference and find your uh, frequency offset. You can do that by pinpointing the machine and then oop, going up or down, finding the cleanest channel. Right now, I've actually got the coil unplugged, so we're not going to have any problems. I'm indoors, but you know, and that's the method to find the uh, you know quietest channel. 
I do that before, you know, right away before I start hunting. Then always make sure anytime I adjust anything, I make sure I've got a good ground balance. Bottle cap reject I have off. I usually leave this off unless there really are tons of bottle caps. But um don't seem to have any problem distinguishing between those. And your discrimination, you know, you can customize that. But I'm saying except negative 30 to 94, do not accept plus 95. Recovery, 70, I'll let you, you know, if the stuff's really far apart, 70. I was running between 60 and a lot of times 50 today. And, uh, you know, that can very slightly affect your depth but you're gonna be good you know down to the six inch coins with the small shooter DD coil it's not gonna bother you a bit and the machines gonna reset quickly the main thing is just to you know swing slowly and ground filter uh, I'm using the 5 Hertz bandpass um, that works great for my soil conditions if you have a lot more you know mineralization you may want to go up uh, you know if you need to but usually swinging that slow you can use a much lower ground filter TX boost I'm running off target volume that's just personal preference backlight personal preference so those are my settings for this little hunt and uh, I'm gonna show you the footage and then I'm gonna show you the finds hey guys it's Gene the Carolina coin hunter here I'm uh, hunting near this uh, river. I've had a ton of rain lately, and this is an extremely uh, popular little fishing spot over the years. You see, there's some big trees. There's a really old church across the street, and this place is really, really loaded with trash. I mean, there's bottles and stuff, pretty old ones, busted all over the place. I mean, guess people used to party here years ago and I'm working the V3i uh, in the high pro program I've got it turned down a little bit trying to hit on extremely deep stuff and uh, with the stock coil just working it really really slowly and I got a three inch signal see that sticking out of the plug You got a silver Roosevelt dime. Keep working this place and see if I can find anything else. Really, really hard hunting. I might have to come back here with a smaller coil. But uh, V3i with the double D, even that uh, 10 inch one, still can pick through the trash pretty well. Show you if I get any other finds. Hey guys, I'm still in the ultimate trash zone. Probably the trashiest place I've ever hunted. Really hard hunting. About three inches deep. I got some kind of weird token. Clean it up and see what it is. It's real light so it feels like aluminum or something. Should I get anything else? <laughs> hey guys, I'm back with the shooter coil on the V3i. Just got a dime signal looks like I got something in here two and a half inches deep looks like a silver rosy it's another another silver in the trash dump I mean this place is a trash dump I found like whole pots and stuff buried in the ground all kinds of junk so this is pretty intense searching should I get anything else Hey guys, I got another uh, shallow reading in the trash. I'm just working it really slow, hardly any discrimination. High pro turned down. Looks like I got another silver dime. These are pretty crusty. A lot of this area, some of the trash looks like it's been burnt and stuff. I'll show you some of it. I mean, it's just a machine gun barrage of signals. I mean, extremely, extremely intense. So you have to work it really slow to find anything. We'll clean this one up later and get a date on it. Let's see if I can show you what it's like here.
I mean, there's signals <laughs> like every half an inch. I mean, if you look around on the ground, I mean, there's trash just laying busted glass everywhere. I mean, it's a real shame. This is a really old place, but there's been some crazy partying going on here. And these two just massive trees would be a fantastic place to metal detect. And there's some stuff here. I mean, I'm finding a little bit, but it is extremely intense. You can see on this side of the tree, I mean, there's like some ancient burnt tires. And uh, here's a little picnic area. But, uh, yeah, you'd have to watch it with kids or something playing around here. There's just so much old glass. Rivers down there. There's a cool little fall back behind those trees. Like mini, mini falls, rapids or whatever you want to call it. But great spot, but it has really been abused. Look at that huge bird. Wow. You see that. But, uh, there's still some silver and stuff in here. I mean, it's super, super intense. I think I'm going to call it quits for today. End up getting a few, and that's pretty good. Um, guess I got about three hours into this hunt. But, uh, we'll get it all cleaned up. And I'll show you everything uh, back at home. Thanks for watching, guys. All right. Here's the finds from the hunt. Got a teeny bit of clad. And then three silvers and a funky old token. I did dig quite a bit of trash. <clears throat> but with the three frequency pinpoint, I was able to pass up on bunches and bunches and bunches of targets. There was some can slaw. Um, you know, I started skipping over that. It, you know, usually comes up in the nickel foil range. Uh, sometimes bigger t pieces can come up in the, the dime range, like, uh, buried sardine cans and stuff like that. And there were plenty of those, but a lot of times if you get, you know, a shallow, uh, dime reading and you raise the coil and the signal's really strong that you're pretty much uh, can be sure that it's uh, some kind of a can because a small coin, you know, the signal would uh, fade rather quickly. That's just another little tip for you new users. But uh, I'm pretty happy with uh, three silvers in that environment. This baby want to focus in on it, but uh, right here's a 64. No mint mark. Then here's a 1946. No mint mark. And then this one was really tarnished um, in an area where there was a lot of like burnt garbage and stuff. It's a 1957. But, um, you know, hey, silver, I'll take it. And then I got this really crusty old token. Pretty cool. It is beat but pretty neat looking and then just some clad uh, missed it by a year or so on one of these I got 65 then one of these is this one I think is a 89 and then uh, you know just a 1980 copper penny but um, you know that just kind of shows you really heavily hunted places you know aren't completely dead if you've got the patience for it to run with you know as little discrimination as possible and really work it slow there's still uh, plenty of silver out there and um, you know just give it a shot and uh, eventually it's gonna pay off I appreciate you guys watching and uh, hope to see you again on another video soon All right. Bye.
Bye.